What's up, all? JC3 here, the Baller of YouTube, the general. Welcome to, well, I want to say topic tackle, but this is a recap of the 2019 NBA Summer League. Shout out to the NBA and NBA playmakers. They flew me out here and we stayed at the Aria. I'm outside of that right now. Bunch of NBA players walking around here. All right, if you follow my Instagram story, you would know that, so you should follow me on IG now. But simple fact of the matter is today we have a recap of everything, all right? We ended up getting some uh, really good seats, all right? VIP seats, um, saw a lot of reporters, players, sat by some of the players' fathers. So let's just go ahead, we'll get straight into this. All the recap from a crazy opening weekend at Summer League. There was earthquakes out here, I mean, it was wild. breaking news into sports center there were a couple of games that could not finish at the cox pavilion between the magic and the spurs pelicans and the knicks were drawn off the floor at the thomas and max center you're hearing the concourse level and looking at it right here for a 7.1 earthquake they evacuated the court decided the basketball was done for the night mostly because of that jumbotron that was swaying hanging there simply hanging in the air through some cables that stood through the night had another earthquake down here just now crazy crazy the yeah, hoops definitely started shaking. <laughs> People looking around crazy. Definitely earthquake. Oh, you, you see Dwayne Bacon back there. There he is on his phone. Home team hoops, baby. You could say that we shook it up. Summer League day one, Thomas and Mac. There's a 7.1 earthquake at the end of this whole thing. It's crazy. I was watching uh, the Magic and Spurs. Lonnie Walker was, was really good coming back. They canceled the rest of the games. I don't even know if that uh, Pelicans-Knicks game was over, but Zion had an injury first half to the knee, so that's day one at Summer League. Okay, now on to day two. I ended up staying at the Cox Pavilion all day because there were better seats there behind the team bench compared to the Thomas and Mack Center. It was harder to get good seats there, especially during the Zion game on day one. Now, unfortunately, I don't have footage of this, but some cool highlights during day two was that during the Hawks and Bucks game, I ended up sitting next to Ray Young, Trey Young's dad, and I didn't even know it at first. We started talking and he says, you know, I've got a son that plays on the Hawks. His name is Trey Young. I mean, dang, what an introduction. I looked over at him like, dang, you're Ray Young? Okay. Trey was sitting courtside and I almost got to talk to him. Ray actually came and asked my dad where I was later that day so I could go talk to Trey, but I had gone off to film a couple videos for the NBA Playmakers channel with these guys. Hey, what's up? Hey, so we just filmed a couple YouTube videos with these guys, all right? It's Lee. Guys. And during Grizzlies Pacers, I ended up sitting next to T. Morant, Jaws' dad, so that was dope. And that day, I was also interviewed by the NBA social team about Summer League. Take a listen into a bit of that. The first night having it sold out, I believe this is the first time ever it's been sold out. Um, great reactions, obviously the main game of the night last night was the Zion and RJ. Just just really a lively atmosphere, great experience. Obviously, I think we had LeBron and Anthony Davis come out as well. And so we're seeing a lot of big name stars starting to come out to this. But who are some of the notable guys you want to see or have seen, you know? With, with Zion, he's just a different type of force. You know, we really haven't seen anybody like him before, LeBron. Similar, similar type of player, but um, you know, we've never really seen anybody with that big impact. Cam Reddish just walked in the room. I mean, we might as well see him play eventually when that trade goes through, whatever needs to happen for him. Um, so he's another one. Who are some of the, like, the notable guys that you've seen on the sideline watching the games? Main guys, we saw LeBron and Anthony Davis last night. Trey Young was over on the sideline last game. Donovan Mitchell was last night. Uh, Buddy Hill was there. And uh, I think today we had Ben Simmons show up as well. So like I said, a lot of them are showing up now. This is a big event. This is not just kind of an, an afterthought or just something for rookies or players trying to make the league. This is something that's really um, drawing a lot of top name players and, and reputable players out here. So whatever the NBA is doing, got to keep doing it because you're bringing the top guys out here. Talk about how like your involvement with NBA Playmakers just like helped you Yeah, so from a professional standpoint, I mean, obviously, none of this would be possible 
Um, having this uh, VIP experience out here has been great, so I'm very grateful to uh, have this opportunity. I think having the, the contest this year with uh, submitting a video for playoff uh, submission to be able to win this was great. Uh, it was something that I definitely thought about when I made my video on Damian Lillard that ended up winning. I'm um, thinking about how I could best represent um, him as a player and just the NBA. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? I think being invisible would be the best. And I thought about, I mean, you can fly, but if they say white men can't jump, I defy those odds because I get up there now, even though it was short a lot of my life. But So I'm not flying, so I'll take, I'll take invisible because, you know, you're just a walking cheat code everywhere you go. No one knows where you are. All right, so that's it from Vegas. It is a wrap. I hope everybody enjoyed this recap. Leave your feedback in the comments down below. Subscribe, like. We'll see you in the next one. Topic Tackle coming soon. JC3, out.